Hello, my name is Glenn Vickery and welcome to my YouTube channel Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival and today I thought we would uh, go into um, a bit of land navigation okay and uh, the first thing we would need to do when we're learning this is um, uh, talk about maps okay um, so with maps I think everybody knows what a map is generally uh, everybody's probably seen a road map okay uh, that you use when you're in your car to find out where you are. Uh, road maps are quite easy because you, you've got like signs on the roads um, that will tell you the name of the road and uh, you can find your way around quite easily. You don't need a compass or anything else like that generally. Um, you can find your way around quite easily. There's other kind of maps like uh, Google Maps. A lot of people have uh, Google Maps on their phone um, or on the computer. Um, and you can find your way around by using Google Maps. Um, uh, the type of maps that we're going to get into are what we call topographical maps. And these uh, type of maps are generally used for land navigation uh, when you're out um, uh, bush bashing it. So you're either out uh, on a uh, carrying your pack uh, or you're going for a day walk in the mountains or the hills. Um, and, or you might be in a jungle or a forest or something along those lines. Okay, so when you're out in the wop wops, um, the type of map you want to be using generally, uh, we use things called a topographical map. Um, now, there's uh, let's have a let's let's get straight into it and have a look at it. Okay, now this here is a uh, uh, what we call a topographical map. Okay, just there. Right, you may or may not have seen this type of map before. Okay, what is a map? Okay, basically a map is a bird's eye view of the a portion of the world's surface. Okay, all right, so you can imagine a bird flying above the land here, okay, looking down. And that's what a bird is going to see. Or you can imagine yourself flying in a plane and you're looking down and you can see a portion of the Earth's surface, the land below you, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay. And so what's happened here is the map has had a photo taken of a portion of the Earth's surface and it's been um, put in a picture form on a uh, piece of uh, paper, okay, uh, where we can use this to navigate on land, okay, so that's basically what it is. All right, so if I grabbed, just in a little bit more detail, if I grabbed a uh, globe here of the world, okay, um, here we are down here in uh, New Zealand, down at the bottom of the world, okay, and basically, if I was flying over this here, or a bird was flying over this, um, uh, over the land, looking down, and whatever the bird could see, a portion of that land or that earth, this is what we would see on the uh, map. Okay. Now, the world as we see it is round. Okay, it's a big globe, it's like a big ball, so it's sort of round. And the map is not round, it's flat. So the the map will be slightly distorted, okay, because it's it's the map is a picture of what's come off the actual planet. Okay, now the planet is round, it has it, it has a curvature, okay, it's not flat, and so the map is the closest that we can get to making it flat on a flat piece of paper compared to what is actually on the ground itself. Okay, so that's a map. Let's have a look at some of the uh, portions of the map. Well, let's talk about the map in general first. Okay, now the map itself here that we can see um, points north. Okay, so the top of the map, up this end here where my hand is, okay, this is the north, 
okay, which is pointing towards the top of the Earth, the top of the globe, okay. So if you can imagine going back to our globe here, okay, the the map, all maps point to north. The top of the map points to the top of the world, okay, and the bottom of the map points to the bottom of the world, and the right hand side of the map points out to the east, okay, and the left hand side of the map points out to the west, all right. So in this case with the map here, as I said, the where my pencil is pointing and going towards the top of the map up here, that's the north pointing towards the top of the globe, uh, top of the world, and out to the right hand side where I'm pointing now, okay, out on this side where my hand is, that is pointing to the east, okay, and at the bottom of the map down here, pointing down this way, is south pointing down towards the South Pole and out to this way here out on the left hand side of the map is pointing to the west of the uh, globe okay so all maps come pointing with the top of the map pointing to the north okay so that's very important okay what is um, particularly important about a topographical map okay a topographical map is basically uh, very important in the fact that it's generally focused towards bush areas. Okay, if you're going out in the bush, if you're going out in the mountains, in the jungle, um, things like that, where you're going away from a lot of roads um, and things like that, you're going up into the mountains. Okay, you're going hiking, you're going camping, you're going hunting, um, or you're using it for military. Um, operations and things like that. Okay, so it's 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 used for for going out in the wop wops. Okay, what makes it particularly important is uh, it is used. The topographical maps um, have grid squares on them. Okay, so what I mean by grid squares is if I can, I'll bring the map up a bit and see if we can get a picture of it. I don't know if it's going to munt out on us. Okay, Let's see if we go. Alright, so if you can see all the the lines here, see the blue, the blue line and there's another blue line over here and a, another one over here and another one here and then there's also lines that go across a straight line that goes across and another straight line here that goes across okay these here are all called grid lines okay and what these grid lines do okay or um, they they split the whole map up okay into sections okay what we call grid squares okay and so each square that you can see here okay if get a, a, that square there I'll get a pointer let me get a pointer. Okay, so if you can see this square here, okay, that there is called a grid square, alright, a grid square. And so you've got um, hundreds of grid squares on the map, okay, and it sections off the map, okay. That's what we have on topographical maps. Another thing that we have on topographical maps is things that we call um, contour lines. Okay, I'll try and get in here. And you can see, if I can get it in here. Yeah, where are we? Yeah. Let's see if we can find some good contour lines. Uh, you can see all these orange lines here. See these orange lines, these wiggly orange lines? These are what we call contour lines, and they give us um, the heights of the land, okay, so they give us the elevation of the land itself, and, and the shape of these contour lines tells us the shape of the land, okay, so if you can see this one here, okay, that's telling us the shape of this hill, okay, the other contours that are going around it, around it here are telling us the shape of the land. So the contour lines 
are extremely important on a topographical map because they tell us the shape of the land. So by looking at the map and looking at the contour lines, okay, it will tell us what the land looks like. Okay, so that's very, very important for a topographical map. Okay. Other parts of the topographical map that are very important is, let's start from the top of the uh, map here. So we have what we call the marginal, the, the, so the part over here that I just showed you, that's the main part of the map. The other part of the map is what we call the marginal uh, information. Okay, so if you see where my pencil is here, all this area here is all part of the margin. Okay, and coming out along the bottom of the map here also is all part of the margin. And within the margin, all along here and up the side, is all what we call marginal information. And that marginal information, all the information in here, will help us to use the map. Okay, and all of the information that's contained in the marginal information is extremely important when we're using the map. Okay. So let's start at the top of the uh, margin itself. Okay, what do we have? Let's bring this up a little bit closer. Okay. The first thing we have, I'll just fold this up a bit, make it a little bit easier to use. The first thing we have when we're dealing with marginal information is the what we call the legend. Okay, and the legend. I'll just fold this up a little bit more, actually. Okay, that's better. Okay, so the legend will tell us things like, um, this part here is, say, roads and tracks, and it will give us a diagram, okay, a symbol of what the roads look like that are on the map. Okay, so for example, this one here is a state highway, so it's a main highway, and it's state highway 1 in this case. It might be state highway 2, state highway 4, state highway 20, whatever it may be. Then it will go down into other roads, which is like another main road here, okay, and then it goes down into smaller roads, smaller roads, tracks, okay, vehicle tracks and walking tracks, okay. Um, it'll go into um, sealed roads, tar sealed, you know, unsealed roads, and things like that as well. All right. Uh, let's moving on down. It's going on to hear about railways, so railway lines. Okay. Here's railway junctions um, and whatnot. Okay. Railway crossings, things like that. Then in this case here, we're going into things that we uh, would call just miscellaneous. All right. Miscellaneous. Okay. And here we're talking about residential areas, which is things like. Uh, where there's buildings and um, you can see all the grey area here around the road so that's a residential area where people live okay and there's buildings factories things like that okay um, large buildings would be big the big black boxes okay for large buildings um, we'll carry on down because I'm not going to go through all of them uh, what else we got here I'm just, not, I'm just trying to have a look at the same time Okay, so we've got churches, uh, cemetery, grave, you know, uh, training track for like a race course, you know, for like a horses and stuff like that. So it goes into all these different symbols and whatnot, okay? Uh, shipwrecks, uh, pipelines underground and blah, 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 okay? Then we're going into things like telephone, telephone lines, okay, and things like that. Let's flick it down a little bit further. And we're going into relief uh, things. So we're talking about uh, uh, contact contour lines, which is what I talked about before, which has got the uh, little orange um, lines, wiggly lines. And these contour lines are probably one of the most important things, and they will tell us um, the shape of the land by the shape. The shape of the contours will tell us the shape of the land. And uh, this particular map, it shows us that uh, the contours actually go up in uh, 20, 20 meter increments, okay, so it's in meters, alright, so that's quite important as well. So in between each contour line uh, would be 20 meters. Okay, it goes into other things like uh, uh, 
might be ice and um, uh, different things like spot height, spot features and trigs and blah blah blah. Okay, carry on. Um, now, moving on down, it's going into some here, some water features, which are in uh, blue, all right? And it might go into things like estuaries and shoals and reefs and um, boat ramps and whatever else, marshland and swamp and all that kind of stuff, okay? And streams going into like little blue lines for streams and uh, water tanks and whatever else, okay? It's just, just giving you an idea. And then we're going into things like here, vegetation features, uh, which is talking about like native forest, which is like the dark green, very close together. Okay, so it'll be quite thick area to walk through. Um, then we've got a, exotic coniferous forest, which is probably talking about, you know, things like um, pine trees and stuff like that. And then here you've got exotic non-coniferous, uh, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, who cares? Okay. Uh, forest, which is things that are um, uh, bush areas that are not uh, pine trees and stuff like that. Okay, then you've got shrubland and 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 just other trees and and as as things go from dark to lighter, that means the lighter it is, the easier going it is. So that's very important when you're um, using uh, maps. And then it's got mangroves and things like that. So you don't want to be walking through the mangroves; it'll be really hard work. So. The uh, legend it tell, gives us a diagram of what's on the map, and then it gives us an exa it tells us what that diagram is. So the legend is extremely important when reading the map. Uh, anything that you find within the map here, symbols and things like that, if you're not quite sure what it is, you come over to the legend, you go through the legend, you find it, and you'll know exactly what um, you're going to be coming across, what you're going to be looking at on the map, and that will be what's on the ground. Okay, moving down the uh, marginal information, we have a part here, and every map has different marginal information, by the way. They're not all exactly the same. Okay, so in this case here, we have uh, what we call important information. Important information will generally talk about things that, um, uh, the, the, how the map is uh, not 100% accurate, okay? Uh, the rep for example, the representation of the map of a road or a track does not necessarily indicate public right of access. So just because you see a road or um, uh, an area or, or a fence or a gate or something, doesn't mean you can necessarily go on it. It might be private land, okay? Uh, so that's very important. Other things that it can go into is it can talk about um, things like uh, that the map is not... Uh, depending on when the map was made, this map is this map I've got here is uh, very new. Uh, it was actually uh, published in uh, 2015, all right? Published in 2015, so it's only a couple of years old. So this map will be very accurate, okay? Um, so important information will talk about things like uh, if the map was made uh, 30 years ago, then the land may have changed on the map, okay? So let's take, for example, uh, this, 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 these uh, creeks here, okay? Um, let's take, for example, let's say, for instance, um, that this stream here, imagine somebody put a dam further up the stream, and this stream no longer existed, okay? The stream may not be there anymore in, say, 20 years' time. Somebody might have put a dam up further up, and the stream's gone. So it'll show that there's a stream on the map, and there currently will be a stream there, but at some stage, someone might dam it up, okay? It might show certain features like uh, hills or whatever, okay? So imagine these, uh, these contour lines here. Imagine this uh, feature here, all right? And imagine there was really bad weather, a lot of rain, and half of that feature came down, okay, it just crashed, right, came down, came apart, fell apart, might be an earthquake, whatever, um, and that feature there, so when we look at the contour, it's going to tell us how the feature, what the feature looks like, what the land looks like, that may change from an earthquake, it may change from erosion, from lots of rain, and bad weather, and things like that, um, also the uh, sea, uh, we don't have any 
ocean on this particular map, but if the sea's hitting the land, it can erode the land and change the layout of the land. So the map, okay, uh, when we're looking in the important information, will normally tell us that the map is only as accurate as since when it was taken, okay? So it was taken two years ago, this particular map, which means that the information on it will be pretty accurate. If the map was uh, published or made uh, 30 years ago, then some of it may not be 100%, okay? I would say it would be pretty accurate, but it may not be 100%. If the map was made 100 years ago, chances are there's going to be erosion, there's going to be, would have been earthquakes, there would have been, um, the, the land's going to change, streams might have disappeared um, through farming, whatever, okay, and things like that. So we need to take that into account, and you'll normally find that kind of stuff in the important information. Okay, this type of map here is called a topo, uh, NZ topo 50 uh, map. Okay, so basically a topo 50. The NZ in this case just stands for New Zealand, which is where I am. Uh, the topo 50 is a short form um, for topo meaning topographical, and 50 means that the um, the map is a 1 in 50,000 map. Okay, so if I scroll down just a little bit further, you'll see here the title of the map. So in this case, this map is a topo 50, all right, which means it's a 1 in 50,000 map, okay, so that means for every one centimetre, okay, I might gain off my memory, for every one centimetre on the ground, okay, or on the map should I say, so one, one centimetre on the map here, imagine my, uh, from the tip of the uh, pencil here to where my thumb is, is one centimetre, one centimetre on the map here, is actually 50,000 centimetres on the actual ground. Okay, so it might only look very like a very small distance here, but 50,000 centimetres is quite a fair way. Okay, so uh, basically uh, one centimetre would be uh, I would say 500 metres on the ground. Okay, if we're talking meters. So we have the uh, 1 in 50,000, so that's our topo 50 map, or 1 in 50,000, okay, 1 in 50, otherwise. Uh, we have the title of the map, okay, uh, and we also have a thing here called BF34. Now the BF34 is the number of the map, so every map, okay, every topographical map is numbered. Okay, and the reason why it's numbered, if you can imagine, let's going to go to the map here, uh, just up above on the uh, legend. If you have a look at, we've got a picture here in the legend of the North Island of New Zealand. Okay, and you'll see a little orange or red uh, rectangle here, and that little rectangle is this map. Okay, is this map here. It's the map, this map is the area of that little rectangle there of New Zealand. Okay, so it tells us where we are. Alright. So, and obviously as I said before, the top of this rectangle, the top of it is facing north, pointing towards north, towards the top of the uh, world, and the bottom of that rectangle is pointing towards south, and the right hand side is pointing towards the east okay and the left hand side of that rectangle is pointing to the west moving on down we can see here what we call um, adjoining uh, maps so as i said before this map is uh, the new zealand topo 50 bf 34 and if we come down here we can see this little orange or red uh, rectangle and it has BF34 Bennydale, Bennydale in it. So this part here is the actual portion of this whole map here, all right, on this map. Um, and we have adjoining, again, that BF34 
is over here, the BF34 on the actual country. We have adjoining maps, so we've got BF34 here, on the right or the eastern side of the map is BF35, and it will also tell us the name of um, uh, the uh, map, Whakamaru, and on the left hand side uh, we have BF33, uh, Tikuiri, and then if we go to the northern side of the uh, adjoining map, to the north, we have uh, BE34, and so on, BE35, BE33, coming down to the south side of the map, okay, is uh, BG34, and to the right BG35, and BG33 over here. So this will tell us our adjoining maps, okay, so if you wanted to travel from this map here, and head over into this direction, you would need to get this map, so you could order this map here, if you knew that you were going to be going from here in this direction, going off BF34 into BF35. Okay, so that's what we call adjoining maps. Okay. Uh, the land information here. Okay, this is just where we get we can get our maps from, from them. Okay, so if you wanted to order a map, um, you can contact these guys and get a map, or there's other places you can get maps around the country. The next thing we're looking at on our map here is what we call the uh, magnetic declination. Okay, the magnetic declination. And for most New Zealand maps, okay, uh, all of these magnetic declinations are slightly different. In this case here, this one has uh, the first arrow pointing directly up all right, going towards the north of the map, okay, if we look at it like that, okay, it's pointing to the north, and that there, that one there is called grid north, okay, you can see it here, I'll bring it in closer, grid north, so that's the grid north arrow, and out to the right hand side, we have the magnetic north arrow pointing out to the right, because uh, this map is basically saying that your compass, your magnetic compass, the magnetic, so every, everybody knows that a magnetic compass, uh, the compass points north, okay, the, the magnetic needle points north. And this arrow shows us the direction that the compass will be pointing when using this map, okay. So when using the, the map going straight up and down, the magnetic compass needle will point out to the right, with this come with this map, okay, on this part of the country, All right? And with the magnetic declination, I'll get into it in more detail at some point, All right? And in between these two uh, arrows, okay, we have what we call the grid magnetic angle or the GM angle, okay? And uh, we don't need to worry too much about that right now. Underneath the magnetic uh, diagram here, the magnetic declination diagram, we have some information. So let's quickly just read that out. Magnetic north, which is this um, arrow, okay? Magnetic north on this map is 22 degrees, okay? Or 391 mils. East, okay, which is east, which is to the right, okay? East of grid north. Grid north is straight up and down, so again, magnetic north, okay, is east to the right of grid north, which is straight up and down, okay, on the map. Okay, east of grid north during 2015, okay, which the map was made 2015, increasing, okay, that's the magnetic, uh, this arrow here, will increase, which means it'll continue to tick over to the right. Okay, it's going to increase at the rate of approximately half a degree, all right, or nine mils over 25 years. So when you see the, uh, the mils, the degrees here, most people understand that most civilian compasses work in degrees, okay, um, from zero right round to 360 degrees, uh, with military compasses, uh, a lot, not all military, but a lot of military compasses use mills, okay, 
which is, uh, in this case here, 22 degrees is equal to 391 mils. Okay, so a military compass would use normally mils, and a civilian compass would use degrees. And down here, the change of the magnetic um, magnetic north, okay, the, the, the magnetic arrow here, okay, changes uh, half a degree every over 25 years. Okay, or 9 mils, changes 9 mils over 25 years. And we'll get into that in more detail another time, okay. But uh, this, this, this diagram and this information is extremely important when you use a map and a compass together. Okay, you, you, we must learn how to use this. And for those that are interested in that, I will go into teaching you how to use this um, in order to use a map with a compass. Okay, so a map can be used by itself or it can be used with a compass. Further along the, uh, the marginal information here, I'm just going to put that down. Okay. Further along here we have the scale okay, of the, uh, the actual map itself. And as we talked about before, it's a 1 in 50,000 scale. So for every 1 centimetre on the map is 50,000 centimetres on the ground, which is basically, uh, for every 1 centimetre, it's 500 metres on the ground. Okay. So if I do 1 centimetre on the map, that's actually 500 metres on the actual ground, on the actual land itself. Okay, the vertical interval between the contours is 20 metres. That's very important information. Okay, um, so just really quickly, I'll give an example of what that's talking about on my brand new whiteboard, okay. which I bought especially for you guys, okay, to help uh, teach you some of this land navigation. So that, where it says the vertical interval between the contours is 20 metres, what this means is, if you remember when I talked about the contour lines, okay, that's those squiggly lines that show us a uh, hill, okay, and let's say we've got another contour line here, and another contour line here, and another contour line here, okay? That would be showing us maybe a hill, if we, if we do the side, this is looking down on a mountain, for example, or a hill, um, from a bird's eye view on the map. And each one of these lines is called a contour line, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'll sort of do like a picture of what maybe this might look like. We'll do another contour here and another contour there. So let's have a look at this. This might actually look something like this. So the actual mountain, looking at it like this, is what that looks like for the contour lines. And so these contour lines here would be going along, say, like, like that. All right. How many have we got? One. One would be the, the top here. All right. One, two, three, four, five. One. One, two, three, or five okay now these would be all even I'll try and make them as even as I possibly can okay so those are our contour lines so if you can imagine that that those are our contour lines there I'll zoom it in a little bit better I reckon we can get in a little bit better okay so these are our contour lines so if imagine that that, that this here is going down like that Okay, that one's probably coming down to about there, to about there, to about there, and to about there. Alright, and same along here. These are going to about that, that's going to about that, that one's going to about that, that one's going to about that, 
and let's go into about that. Okay, so this is what the contour lines look like, and that's what the feature would look like if we we're looking at it from an angle, from the side on, and that's from top on. So that's from the top, and that's from the side. All right, and our contour lines will tell us that. Now, when we said just earlier that the vertical lines of the contours are 20 meters apart. So let's imagine that um, this contour line here was at 20, right? That would be 20 meters, okay? It won't have the M, it'll just show 20. But for in this case, I'm just gonna put the M there, all right? Actually, I'll take it away, all right? So that there is 20 meters. The next contour up, this one, the one on the inside here, would be 40. All right, that's 40 meters, right, above sea, sea level. And the next one here is going to be 60 meters above sea level. The next line would be 80 meters above sea level. And the ones on the top here, I'm not going to write them in, but they would be, as you know, 100 metres above sea level. Okay, so each contour, as it's going up, is showing us that at the bottom here, that's the bottom of the mountain, the hill, and then it's going up to 80 metres and 100 metres being the top. So again here would be... Uh, let's if, if we drew this out, we came out this way, that would be 100 metres. This one here would be 80 metres. This one here would be 60 metres. That one there would be 40 metres. And the one at the bottom would be our 20 metres. And obviously this one in here would be our 100 metres, but I'm not going to write it in. But we know it would be 100 metres because it's the next contour line in. And this is why, as I said earlier, that the topographical map, one of the most important parts on the topographical, topographical map is our contour lines, okay? Contour, hopefully I'm spelling it correctly, lines, okay? Our contour lines, right? That's these things here. And the color of those is brown, okay? A light brown colour or a light orange colour, depends on what sort of colours you see. Okay, so that's very important. Um, and so as we just seen uh, just a minute ago, all right, the map tells us exactly what scale the contour lines are. Okay. Let's zoom that in. All right. So the vertical interval or the distance, the gap, all right. Vertical would be straight up, all right. So going from bottom to top, okay, or just in between each line, okay. The vertical interval between the contour lines or between the contours is 20 meters. So that's very important information. Not every map is the same. A map may do it in 10 metre intervals, it may do it in uh, 40 metre intervals, it may do it in whatever, okay? It may do it in feet, it may do it in something else, okay? Some other uh, 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 measurement, all right? So that's very important. We'll find that in the marginal information, okay? In New Zealand, pretty much all uh, contour lines are done in 20 metre increments, Okay, the next thing that we will find below, sorry about that, the next thing we'll find below this is what we call a scale, okay? And this scale here, okay, we'll try and zoom it in down here, okay? You'll see here it's got zero, right? And then it goes out to one. And it does that, it's showing um, in between here 20 meters, Right, 20, so it'll be 0, 20, 40, 
Hang on, 10. It will be 10, sorry. Hang on, so it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So from 0 to that first one would be 100 metres. Okay? All right, on the actual uh, map, it's 100 metres. So 0, 100 metres, 200 metres, 300 metres, 400 metres... And the small line there, slightly larger line, is 500 metres. So between zero and that line there is 500 metres. If we carry on, 600 metres, 700 metres, 800 metres, 900 metres, and one kilometre, or otherwise known as 1K. Okay? 1K is just short for saying one kilometre. Okay? If we look out to the right... That zero goes zero, one, so that's one kilometre, two kilometres, three kilometres, okay, going along, four kilometres, four, five, six kilometres, coming along, seven, eight, nine, and ten kilometres, okay, and you can see clearly it tells us ten kilometres. So this scale, what we call a scale, we can use that when we are measuring things on the map itself okay we can use the scale here each grid square okay if we go into uh, the grid squares come down a bit okay if we see the lines here right you can see there's a um, a square here, right? The blue line. That there is called a grid square, okay? And the grid square is one kilometer from that corner to that corner is one kilometer, and then going from the corner to corner down is another kilometer, and then going from that corner to that corner is a kilometer, that corner to that corner is a kilometer that corner to that corner is a kilometre, or basically 1k from there to there, 1k from there to there, 1k from there to there, and 1k from there to there. So this square, or what we call a grid square, is uh, one kilometre squared. Okay, so it's a kilometre on each side, which is, as we just seen on the, uh, the scale here, okay, one kilometre. Right, so each grid square is one kilometre to the to the bottom, one kilometre on the left, one kilometre on the top, and one kilometre on the right. So every grid square is one kilometre. Um, each side is a kilometre, all right, or one k. Okay, what else do we have here? Some more very important information is the horizontal datum, okay, of the uh, the horizontal datum here of this map is datum 2000, or otherwise known as NZGD, okay, for New Zealand Geodic Datum 2000. Okay, so this is a late model map. Okay, it's a modern map. And the NZGD 2000, in this case, for all purposes, or for practical purposes, NZGD 2000, or Geo New Zealand Geodic Datum 2000, um, equals WGS 84. Okay. So WGS84, all right, I'll try and zoom it in there a little bit. The WGS84 here is the latest, one of the latest types of datum that we use for maps. And these here are used for when we are using a map with a GPS unit, okay, a, a satellite unit. Uh, positioning uh, unit okay so if you know what a GPS is it's a global positioning system uh, and a GPS is like a handheld uh, unit that you can use to find where you are on the ground 
this map here, you would use um, this this map with all the grid lines. Let's come back a bit because this is about something similar and, and about the same. All the grid lines that we see that this map is broken down into, all the lines and the, all the lines are going straight up and down and to the left and right, creating all those squares which we call grid squares. When the when the map is broken up like that, that's what we call uh, the UTM. Okay, and the UTM is, uh, if I remember right, is the Universal Tran Traverse something. Okay, I can't remember exactly, but UTM is the uh, the method of breaking the Earth up into grid squares. Okay, and so that's what the topographical map uses. It uses UTM, otherwise known sometimes as UTM ups, okay, UTM ups, all right, so I'll write that over here, so the grid squares, all the grid squares on the map, all the lines going up and down, and to the cross like that, the powers to be, that, that be, used a thing called, uh, a system called UTM, okay, UTM, and that's basically breaking all the world up, all the land, into grid squares, okay? And they've done that all over the world, all over the entire globe. And so when you see these grid squares on the, uh, when you see these grid squares, these lines on the map, the topographical map, that's part of what we call the UTM system, okay? The UTM system, okay? And, um... When you use the map with a GPS unit, <clears throat> you're using the UTM as well as what I just explained there, which was the um, NZ Geodic Datum 2000, okay, or otherwise known as WGS, I think it's WGS or WSG. WGS uh, 84, 84, okay, 84, all right, so the NZGD2000 is the same as, for practical purposes, WGS84, all right, and so what you would plug in, type into your GPS unit, modern day GPS unit it would be UTM and the geodic datum would be either NZGD2000 or WGS84 okay and so if you see the WGS84 use that one all right you can't go wrong with using either either okay so those are very important if you're going to be using a map this map in particular this map with a uh, GPS okay Okay, so that's uh, very important for those of you that uh, use GPS. Okay, um, then we go into the next one down, okay, on the uh, information, marginal information here, and it talks about the projection, New Zealand Traverse Mercator 2000, we don't need to worry too much about that, okay? It's just talking about um, the projection of the uh, the map, how the map was made, okay? Part of how the map was made. It's not going to make any difference to us, all right? Um, then it goes into a few other things here, um, GRS 80, uh, some scales, um, latitudes and longitudes and blah, blah, blah. Not too much of a major for us, okay? We don't need to worry too much about that. Then we go into it's copyrighted, and then over to the left-hand side of the margin, we have what we call uh, the grid reference, um, to give a grid reference on this map, okay? We're not going to do grid references at the moment on this map. A grid reference basically is giving a location of where you are on the map, or giving a location of a place on this map, 
Um, and that's all the grid references. And we'll go into grid references on another video. So I don't want to make this video too long. I want to go into as much detail as possible, but I want to go, I want to go into it in too much depth. Okay. Now, there's probably, uh, apart from the grid reference system, it's got it all on here. It ex actually explains how to find your location, uh, what numbers we use to uh, find your location on the map or give your location to someone on the map. That's all this does, and it tells you, breaks it down and tells you how to do it. Okay? Um, what else? The last thing I really want to go into of what we have on the map here is what we call uh, Eastings and Northings. Okay? Now, on the map here, I'm just going to scroll back a little bit. On the map, along the bottom of the map here, we have what we call um, numbers. Okay, so we've got a number here, a number at each line where there's all these lines going straight up and down. The lines that go straight up and down on the map, the blue lines that I was showing you, okay, all part of this UTM system, all these lines, all the lines that go straight up from south to north, okay, from south to north, or if you want to look at it from north to south, the ones that are vertical, the ones going straight up and down here, all of them, all along here, those are called eastings, all right? They're called eastings, we call them eastings, and it's quite important that you remember this. <laughs> Okay, so all the lines going straight up and down, okay, the blue lines are called eastings. And they start at the bottom of the map, and they go right to the top of the map. Okay, so they start at the bottom of the map here, and they go all the way up in a straight line right to the top of the map. Those are called eastings, all right? Let's bring that back a bit. Okay. Now, the lines are called eastings, but the numbers at the bottom of each of those lines, okay, down here, all the numbers that go along, these numbers are numbered from left to right, okay, and these numbers are the are numbering the easting lines, the, the lines that are going straight up and down, these are the numbers for them, all right? Now these numbers will always increase by number. So for example, this number here is number, let me look at it closely, number five, okay? So 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and so on. Up to, we have 27 there and 28 on the end. Okay, and so these numbers are the eastings, the easting numbers. So they go from left to right, but the lines themselves go from north to south. But the numbers are called, these numbers at the bottom going from left to right are called eastings. Why are they called eastings? Because they go from here out to the east side of the map out to the eastern side of the map, out to the right-hand side of the map, okay? So these numbers are called eastings, and the lines that are connected to them run from south to north, okay? Up the map. Very important. Okay? Because these numbers we're going to be using at some point to do our grid reference system, okay? To find our location, locations on the map, all right? The next lot of numbers that are extremely important as well are these numbers on the left-hand side of the map, okay? And these numbers here are called northings, okay? And they're called northings because they go from south to north, the numbers, okay? And so they start off here at number 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, and they carry on up to the top of the map, okay? And so, again, these numbers always increase, okay? They always go up 
increase as they go up from the bottom of the map up to the top of the map. They increase in value. All right, so they're going from uh, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and so on. They never go backwards. They never go 31, 30, 29, 28. They don't go down. They always go, as they're going up north, towards the north, they always increase in value. Okay, so that's very important. Now, attached to these numbers, to these northing numbers, is these lines that run from uh, horizontal, that run from uh, west to east. Okay, all these vertical, sort of say horizontal lines that go along the map this way, okay, they are all attached to these northings. So the lines that go left to right, okay, or right to left, however you want to look at it, the ones that are horizontal, okay, are all connected to these northing numbers, all right. So I'll try and bring the map in a little bit so that you can hopefully uh, see some of these numbers a little clearer. Okay, let me just turn this around. Okay, so let's have a look and see if we can uh, get in a little bit closer to those numbers. Okay, so hopefully you can see those. All right. So we're talking, uh, what's that one? So that would be number 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10. And you can see they're on the end of each line. All right. And these numbers are called Eastings. All right. And... Each easting is connected to the lines that are vertical, that go straight up and down, from run from south to north, or from north to south. Okay, all the vertical lines, vertical means straight up and down. Going along to the left-hand side of the um, map, we have the northing numbers, what we call northings. Okay, and the northings start from here, that would be number 30. Number 31, number 32, number 33, number 34, and so on. They would carry on going up to the top of the map, to the northern top of the map. So these are called northings. They always go up, and they always increase by value or by number going upwards. Each of the northing numbers are connected to the uh, grid lines, what we call grid lines, these grid lines again, okay, and these grid lines here are horizontal that go across the map. Okay, so they go across the map that way. All right, another one there going across. Another one here going across. Okay, so all the northern lines, these northern lines, these northern grid lines run horizontal. Okay, going from west to east or east to to west, as long as you know that they're horizontal, they're the flat ones, okay? So we've got our northing numbers, and our, our northing numbers go straight up, up, and our northing lines go horizontal, that are connected to those numbers. Our easting numbers go from west to east, all right? And our, west, our easterly numbers are connected to the lines that...